Well, that's a little bit harsh, don't you think? Well, I'll tell you why. It's not really that I had horrible drawings in the sketchbook, although there are a number of pretty bad ones in there. But the reason is, and the reason I know that it sucked for me, is that it took 10 years for me to finish the sketchbook. And I'm an artist. I enjoy doing art. So I'm gonna tell you a few things that didn't work for me on this sketchbook. Five. Ish. Or so. Yeah. Later, we'll talk about how to pick a good sketchbook for you. And then, do you want to become a better artist? Of course you do. We always want to improve our art. It's as simple as A, B, D. And sometimes C. But mostly D. These days, I'm finishing sketchbooks in, oh, four or five months, or maybe six months. So why did it take me 10 years to finish this one? I sat back and thought about it uh, over the past week or two, and I think I discovered a few things that are helpful to me and, and maybe will be helpful for you. And I think the number one thing is, it is huge. And I mean, it's really big, even for me today. Um, as you can see, it can't even fit into my shoulder bag. Now, I got this sketchbook when I was in middle school, and there's no way I would have brought a larger bag than I absolutely needed to have in order to bring a sketchbook along with me. And that didn't really change much when I got to the university either, so um, being big certainly was a drawback for this book. I am in no way saying that a big sketchbook is a bad idea. I'm certainly not saying that because I have plenty of large sketchbooks. But it probably wasn't a good choice as a first sketchbook. This was my very first one. And at that point, I hadn't developed a habit of using a sketchbook. So having a large one back at the house where I wasn't always, it didn't really lend itself much to a spontaneous use of a sketchbook. If it's not there when the mood strikes you, it really doesn't do you much good. And besides just being hard to lug around, the pages themselves are so large. There's a lot of area to cover. And if you're working the pencil, that could take you a long, long time, and it can get frustrating. So these pages are 14 inches by 10 inches, or uh, let's see, that's 34 by 26 centimeters. That's a lot of area to cover uh, with a little pencil. And closely related to the actual size of the pages is the fact that there are a lot of them. 144 pages, 288 on both sides. Oh man, that is daunting when you're 15 years old. <laughs> I don't know that the number of pages held me back a whole lot, but I knew that I wouldn't get myself another sketchbook until this one was done. That was just the way I did things back then, so it took me a long time to get to the end of this book in order for me to get another sketchbook that probably would have been better for me to start with at that time. Another thing I should probably address is the difference between a sketchbook and an art book. I know there are a lot of people who feel passionately that there is a huge difference between a sketchbook and an art book. And I don't disagree, although I think, generally speaking, we use sketchbook pretty broadly to mean a lot of things. But speaking specifically, in this case, I think it's important to draw a distinction. I think that I was viewing this more as an art book. In other words, a book filled with you know, pretty much finished pieces of art that I could show other people things that I was doing. A sketchbook is generally re regarded as something that's a little bit looser, quicker, uh, maybe a little bit more personal, lots of ideas, very you know, basic sketches a lot of times, um, but not really getting into finished pieces of art so much. One is not better than the other. They just kind of have different purposes. 
I'll talk a little bit about how we can overcome the differences of those uh, art books and sketchbooks a little bit later on in the video. Another thing that didn't work for me on the sketchbook is that the pages come out. It's perforated. And there are a couple things uh, that kind of made things difficult for me with that. One is, of course, that drawings would come out of the book and you'd either lose them or they get damaged. And, um, you know, I didn't particularly like that. The second thing was that I was very tempted to take out pages of things that I didn't like. And although there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, I do wish I had these in there so I, I could better gauge how much progress I made over time. Um, I've, I've lost a lot of these drawings and things that, you know, were experiments that didn't work out. That's too bad. I know that there were some pages in this book that I didn't like that are still in here. And as I'm flipping through it today, yeah, I'm seeing some things that, you know, I kind of like those. You know, it's an interesting idea. So, you know, my suggestion is to keep at least most of the things that you're doing. If you put in some hard blood, sweat, and tears into creating something, I think over the years, you'll probably end up appreciating how far you've come. You can also go through these sketchbooks and be reminded of what things were happening in your life at each point, um, certain styles and drawings and moods uh, might remind you of, oh yeah, that's when such and such was going on. And those are good reminders. It's good not to forget, you know, different parts of our life. And uh, sometimes if you throw those things away, you know, you can't benefit from hindsight. The last thing that kind of made this sketchbook difficult for me was that it was a gift. Now, I love gifts, and this was a beautiful gift, and I am in no way saying uh, I'm not appreciative because I certainly am. I couldn't have afforded this sketchbook at that time. There's just no way. So I had paper to draw on, and that was great. The drawback was that I knew that other people were going to see it. <laughs> they knew that I had it. They knew that I was drawing in it. And so I'd have to reveal things. And that's okay uh, when you feel comfortable with what you're doing. Uh, but I wasn't always comfortable with that at that age. Um, particularly when there are things that were a little bit personal. Um, you know, maybe it was a little bit of therapy for me too. I'm looking at this section, I'm thinking, yeah, I didn't want to talk about this stuff at all. <laughs> and and I, this is all symbolic for, for, um, for other people to see, but it meant something to me. And another reason that having this as a gift was difficult, and I know that a lot of people can relate to this, is I was afraid to ruin it. You know, it's such a nice gift, and I didn't want to put bad drawings in there, things that... It, I thought should just be tossed away. And so that held me back from doing anything that I didn't think that was gonna slam dunk. And so I spent a lot of time not drawing things uh, because I was a little bit afraid. I have since gotten over that big time. I have no problem showing anybody any of these drawings. You may like it, you may not, and you may have some questions as to you know, what I was thinking or what my skill level was, you know what? I'd be happy to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel comfortable enough with what I'm doing that I don't mind. But, you know, if you're at a certain age or a certain point in your artistic development where you don't feel comfortable, I mean, it's completely understandable that you don't want to show people. And I'm of the mind don't do it if you don't feel good with it. But it's probably going to be a little bit harder to get away with that if the sketchbook was a gift. But you know what? We can figure it out, right? 
I did start using this book as a more typical sketchbook when I went to the university. I did take some art courses. I wasn't an art major, but I did take a number of art courses. And um, I think that that was the first time that I was instructed to use a book as a sketchbook, as a learning tool, as opposed to a presentation tool. Um, and I'm going to get into this a little bit later, but um, I certainly was happy that I left some of this stuff in there, even though these were studies and they weren't really important to me. But it did show some development and uh, it showed me kind of the process I went through uh, to get to, you know, a, a better artistic place. Overall, I really still do like this book. I guess I'm going to call it an art book instead of a sketchbook, but um, I learned a lot uh, by going through this again. Now, uh, one thing is I need a fixative. <laughs> I was just talking to somebody about using a fixative with oil pastels, although this is, I guess, more the chalky pastel. But here's another thing. This is a great response when somebody asks you to see your unfinished sketchbook. And you can say, well, I've been doing a bunch of studies on blizzards in history. The Great Blizzard in England of 1615. So that's... That's that one right there. <laughs> I know, it's a joke. I I do, I'm, I'm kind of silly like that. I did more or less finish this sketchbook and I got a different one. Uh, this one was a bound book and it was for my architecture studio. Um, it was required to have like a visual journal and this was really the first time that I was using a sketchbook like most modern artists that I'm seeing on YouTube are using sketchbooks. A collection of writings and drawings and, you know, pasting in things that are of interest. Uh, this was a lot of fun and it really changed my idea about what a book like this could be. To this point, I wasn't really surrounded by artists and we didn't have YouTube way back then. <laughs> so uh, this was completely new to me and it did end up being something that, you know, kind of changed things for me. Oh, there's Dylan, an old friend of mine who <laughs> had a hamster bomb. <laughs> oh, man. He won't mind if I put that up there, I'm sure. I have a few suggestions for those who are looking to get a sketchbook that they will like and use and actually finish. Now, these are not rules. Where we're going, we don't need rules. But we uh, do have a, a few things we might look at. So if I were to do this again, what would I do differently? What kind of things would I look for in a sketchbook. I found one that seems to work for me. It won't work for everybody, but let me tell you what factors went into me selecting this. I'll preface this by saying if you already have a good sketchbook routine, then you already know what you like and I continue to do that. But if you're struggling to find a good sketchbook or you're scheduling to finish one or continue to use it, then in that case, maybe some of these thoughts will help you. But I will say again, there are no rules. You can make whatever decision works best for you in your situation. If anybody says, this is a sketchbook you need to get, eh, it's probably not right. <laughs> it might be, but it's not going to be the right one for, you know, for everybody. I would say that there are two basic considerations. I mean, there are lots, but we can kind of lump them into two categories, one being comfort and the other being the type of paper. Now, by comfort, I don't mean necessarily how it feels in your hands. 
uh, although that can be a consideration. But I mean, is this something that you want to use and have with you? Are you comfortable carrying it with you? Are you comfortable using it? Those are really important considerations because if you like your sketchbook, then you're going to use it. Um, if that's one that you're afraid of, one that you're uncomfortable with, it's probably going to sit there unused. One consideration would be size. As we went over earlier in this video, my first sketchbook was absolutely huge, and that became a large obstacle in me using it, and it took me 10 years to get through it. So I would consider your situation. Are you always on the go? If you are, then you might want a sketchbook that will fit in your purse or your bag, in your back pocket even, in your car. Um, whatever makes sense for you, but make sure that it's not too far away. Uh, otherwise, if you have to go searching for it again, uh, there's a good possibility that you won't use it. Another consideration might be price. I know that I've heard some people say that, you know, their sketchbook is just too nice to be drawn silly, stupid things in there and they're afraid of, of ruining it. If that's your situation, then perhaps you should, you know, look into getting something that's a little less expensive um, and spend more money on an art book. Uh, but for a sketchbook, I think it's something that you want to be able to use without a second thought. And you can also consider style. There are so many different types of uh, sketchbooks and art books, different colors, different types of covers, hardcover, softcover, leather, uh, spiral bound, hard bound, you know, saddle stitched. Uh, there are just so many options. But, you know, I'd choose something that uh, works for you, something that you like and also fits in your budget. Um, and I think that if you get all of those things and it's comfortable, you have it with you, you will probably use it. And aside from comfort, the one other thing that I think that you should consider is the type of paper. Um, you can use, you know, if you're drawing with pencil, you can pretty much use whatever. I mean, you're going to you're going to get by with that. If you're going to be doing sketching in watercolors or using wet media, you might need to consider using a heavier paper, um, something that's not going to warp too much. Um, and possibly if you're using things like markers uh, where there's a lot of bleed through, you might also want to consider a different type of paper. So those are some of the things that I would consider if I were buying a sketchbook today. And by sketchbook, uh, you know, I'm talking about the daily use ones, the one that you don't want to think twice about using it, the one that you're going to use every day and, you know, good stuff and bad stuff, put it all in there. Now for an art book, yeah, I'd be a little bit more picky about that, you know, getting the right kind of paper, um, cause that's a presentation piece and, uh, you know, it has a few different considerations, but I'm mostly con I'm talking about uh, sketchbooks today. So getting a good sketchbook, one that you want, one that you're familiar with and you're comfortable with, this is really important. Because remember at the beginning, I asked if you wanted to become a better artist. And a lot of it comes down to your sketchbook. It really comes down to this. It's very simple. A B, D, uh, I mean C, well, sometimes C, but mostly D. What does this mean? It's always B drawing. It's simple. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is simple. If every day you make it a habit to draw, to do something in your sketchbook, you will get better. Those C's, we can always be creatively drawing. We could always be consistently drawing. You could fill this up with all sorts of different C words. Any, I guess any adverb that will fit. <laughs> they don't even have to be C's. So each person's going to be a little bit different, what they're trying to accomplish with their art. And so these terms are going to change depending on who you are 
and what you're trying to do. But don't let it be 10 years for you to finish your sketchbook. Get in there, do it every day, and you'll become a better artist. Always be cucumberly drawing. <laughs> I don't know why I put that in there. I, I just did. Consider this video a special gift because I usually don't let anybody see my sketchbooks. In fact, I made a point of that in my sketchbook tour of 2023. Check that out if you haven't. Uh, you might like it if this is your first time here. Kind of gives you an overview of what I do. Hey, thank you so much for joining me in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and maybe got a few ideas for yourself for a sketchbook or you know, maybe you have a particular sketchbook that you really, really like. Uh, let me know in the comments, let other viewers know. And, um, you know, hopefully we, as a group, will continue to grow and become better artists and just really enjoy the craft of sketchbooking. Thank you so much, and I will see you very soon, probably next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.